Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I love a good challenge, and there is a fight right now that BoxRec.com, B-O-X-R-E-C.com, rates as a five-star fight. And it's for the cruiserweight title between unbeaten 18 and 0 with 14 knockouts, Latif Coyote, and he's facing 43 year old future Hall of Famer Antonio Tarver. Now, after I watched some film of these guys in recent fights, I went online, as I always do, just to see what the mood was. And I was surprised because I think this fight's lopsided. I have a clear preference in this fight. And to my utter amazement, um, I guess my view is a minority view. Um, apparently, Latif Coyote's people, Freddie Roach included, believe that Latif Coyote wins this fight. And apparently Coyote was out challenging Antonio Tarver going back several months. He even has a video up here on YouTube where he calls out Antonio Tarver. Now, it's hazardous betting against unbeaten fighters. They literally are on winning streaks, right? Sometimes it's wor sometimes it works out. Um, I bet against Vernon uh, Paris, took uh, Zab Judah in their last fight. Sometimes it doesn't. I bet against Danny Garcia, I took Eric Morales, and Eric Morales did not win that fight. But here, you know, I'm not trying to be controversial, but I just don't see how Latif Coyote wins the fight. In fact, I'll even go further and say that I'll be very surprised if Antonio Tarver, who has fought the best, Right? He's fought Chad Dawson multiple times. He fought Clinton Woods. Pretty good fighter back in the day. He just got the title in Australia from Danny Green. In other words, Tarver has literally been fighting elite fighters. I just don't know how Tarver isn't able to end the show and actually get the KO. I'm going to disagree with Freddie Roach and the people behind Latif Coyote, and I'm surprised that an unbeaten fighter would be calling out a uh, older fighter who, quite frankly, I think, is still fighting at championship level. I like Tarver in the fight. Let's talk about why. You know, Coyote, who's a right-handed fighter, seems to spend his entire time in the ring, in my opinion, trying to set up his right hand, right? He looks mechanical. He's low volume. He, he shouldn't be confused with a more athletic, better talent like Chad Dawson, right? He has too wide a foot base. He really doesn't move that well. In my opinion, he's not able to do much with his left. I believe he's tailor-made. For Antonio Tarver, who knows how to use angles, right? Coyote is offensively gifted, but he's defensively limited. In other words, his nickname is Power. He does have one-punch knockout power with that right hand. But to get to the right hand, to set it up, I believe he's very limited. Now, he is a Freddie Roach fighter. But he doesn't have the hand speed, nor does he have the foot speed of Freddie Roach's best fighters, Manny Pacquiao and Amir Khan. In other words, Latif Coyote can't even pretend to be an ambush fighter because he just doesn't have those talents. Right? Now, let me just say this too. Fighters, particularly those with punches, tend to knock out everyone early in their careers. And that's when they get the reputation of having a heavy punch, right? And Coyote does have a heavy punch. 
But as he has moved up in the quality of his competition, and keep in mind, he's not fighting the Danny Greens and Chad Dawsons of the world or the Glenn Johnsons who Tarver also fought. He's not fighting that level, right? He's fighting the Matt Godfreeds and guys like that. As Coyote has moved up in the level of his competition, it's surprising, but his opponents have actually started to go more rounds. In fact, Coyote hasn't knocked anybody out in his last three fights, right? Guys have hit the canvas. I know Godfrey hit the canvas a few times. Um, and let me say, I was a skeptic of Coyote even before the Godfrey fight, right? I know Godfrey hit the canvas a few times, but Godfrey went the distance with Coyote, right? Guys are going the distance with him. Of the four fights that have gone the distance, three of them are Coyote's last three fights, right? And so if you look him up, I believe the reason why he's calling out, and these are the wrong names to call out, right? I believe the reason why he's calling out Tarver and Guillermo Jones, and Guillermo Jones, like Tarver, is an advanced fighter right is because he's 29 years old right don't be confused about age just because a guy doesn't have a lot of fights doesn't mean he's not older coyote's 29 years old and i believe and i'm speculating here i believe that the people pushing his career right want to return on their investment and because he's unbeaten at this point in his career the logical next step is to have him fight championship level fighters. So he's trying to pick on older fighters, right, to try to, you know, get a rate of return for his investors, right? He is 29. The worst thing that could happen to Coyote, the absolute worst, is to fight an unheralded fighter, an unknown fighter who doesn't have the name or title, and then to be exposed. And I believe there's the risk of that because Coyote, to me, isn't natural in the ring, right? He seems rehearsed. He seems reluctant. Now, let's talk about Antonio Tarver. You know, Tarver is an elite fighter. You should consider him to be, you know, a crafty veteran along the lines of a Bernard Hopkins, right? These guys, Evander Holyfield. These guys are older, but these guys know how to box. Let me also say this too. Let me back up just a little bit about Eric Morales. You know, I, I believe Prime Morales beats Danny Garcia rather easily. I believe the moral, the um, Eric Morales who fought last year against um, against. Uh, Gee, I'm having a brain freeze, folks. But I believe the Morales uh, who fought last year against Marcus Maidana would have beaten Danny Garcia, who's also, in my opinion, a bit limited. Morales, according to Juan Manuel Marquez, um, apparently still hasn't fully recovered from gallbladder surgery. But even in the Eric Morales-Danny Garcia fight, which Garcia won, I'm not taking anything away from Garcia. You saw the skill gap between the two fighters early, right? Garcia's throwing looping punches. Eric Morales has a jab going and is hitting him right down the middle and is countering him beautifully. Well, I believe there's a skill gap here as well. Tarver Southpaw knows how to play the angles. He knows how to stand in the ring in places where you can't hit him with your hardest punches, right? Shouldn't be too hard with Coyote because Coyote has a great right hand and in my opinion, not much else, right? He's not going to touch Tarver with his jab, right? Tarver's going to be outside of the jab in a place where Tarver knows he can just step into a punch and land on Coyote. Not only that, there's a difference between these two fighters. Coyote's trying to throw big punches. Tarver actually throws combinations, right? Take a look at the end of the Danny Green fight, right? Tarver's literally 
unloading the entire canister. He throws combinations. He's off at angles. He throws combinations. But unlike Orlando Salida, Tarver can also step in and throw straight punches. In other words, everything's not a hook. Tarver actually fights different styles. He can beat you by cornering you and being right up on you. Think how he beat Roy Jones in the rematch. He can also beat you by standing back and staying outside of you. Right? Tarver is highly skilled. Where Tarver falls apart is when he's facing a younger, better, highly skilled athlete like a Chad Dawson who, despite Chad's lackadaisical body language, is actually quite active in the ring, right? Throwing a jab, preventing you from setting up at angles, right? Um, quick defense, quick reflexes, power punches, can sneak in power, has quick hands. That's not Latif Coyote, right? I'm expecting Latif Coyote early in this fight to figure out that he's not going to be able to knock out Antonio Tarver, right? Tarver went the distance with Chad Dawson, right? Tarver doesn't go down easily, right? Not only that, it's very hard to set up Tarver where you can knock him down when you're as slow-handed as Latif Coyote, right? Latif's not coming in hiding heavy punches in a combination. That's just not who he is. And he doesn't move well enough to pull a Manny Pacquiao where he touches you with a jab, then comes in with his power punch. So I get the feeling Coyote is going to figure out pretty early that he can't knock out Antonio Tarver, and then he's going to have to figure out how he's going to survive the 12 rounds against a guy who still hits hard, who throws combinations, and who, once he figures out the angles, let's give Tarver three or four rounds to do so, right? Tarver really is a counterpuncher, right? Once Tarver figures out the angles, I don't know what Coyote's going to be able to come back with. So I'm in the minority on this fight. I like the 43-year-old. I like Antonio Tarver over Latif Coyote, right? I just feel that Tarver just does things better than Latif Coyote and that Carter, uh, that Tarver won't have problems with a fighter who tries to stand his ground like Latif Coyote, right? Coyote is not Chad Dawson. People need to realize that Chad Dawson is a different talent level. Right? He's among the very best in the sport pound for pound. Right? Latif Coyote isn't that guy. I don't care who his trainer is. Right? It could be Angelo Dundee. I couldn't care less because we have fight film on Coyote. We know what he does in the ring. Don't get fooled by the statements of people around him. What are they going to say? When's the last time you heard a big time trainer say right before a fight, my fighter has little chance of winning this fight. It just doesn't happen. So the bet I'm recommending is Tarver, the 43-year-old, to win this fight straddled against Coyote by KO. Coyote does have a heavy punch. He has a puncher's chance, in my opinion, nothing more. If this goes the distance, I'm expecting Antonio Tarver to win the fight by a pretty wide margin. Let me go one step further too. You know that Danny Green fight where Tarver picked up the cruiserweight title actually went a few rounds. Take a look at Tarver at the end of that fight. That's Tarver's last fight. He was in great shape. Wasn't winded. Didn't look like he was, you know, on his way out. Um, looked like he could have easily gone to 12 rounds. Now, let me just say this. Coyote's just not the kind of guy who is going to have the inside game to tire out Tarver, right? He's not a guy who's going to come up like Andre Ward and literally force an old guy to fight him, right? Rather, Tarver is going to find, just like Hopkins found,
against Jean Pascal that he could literally take rounds off, right? That, you know, Coyote's episodic. The pressure isn't constant, right? Tarver's not going to feel 43 years old in the ring. He's a shrewd fighter. He's a clever fighter. He'll know that he can take rounds off. He can rest. He can pace himself. He's not in the ring with prime Mike Tyson. This isn't a situation where the young guy is always on you and you have to fight, right? This isn't that situation, right? So I think Tarver will be able to pace himself, go a few rounds, and then we'll get to a part of the fight where we're going to question whether Latif Coyote can go the distance, right? Keep in mind, look past age and look at actual experience. Coyote has less experience at going 12 rounds than Antonio Tarver. And unlike Tarver, Coyote's going to be facing combination punching, right? If Tarver gets him up on the ropes and unloads like he did against Danny Green, I'm not sure if Latif Coyote has ever encountered anything like that. I think Tarver has a chance at a late stoppage. I like Tarver big in this fight, but I do plan to hedge it with Coyote by KO. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.